Okay, tonight is uh, Alma chapter 43. And it came to pass that the sons of Alma did go forth among the people to declare the word unto them. And Alma also himself could not rest, and he also went forth. And we shall say no more concerning their preaching, except that they preach the word and the truth according to the spirit of prophecy and revelation, and they preached after the holy order of God by which they were called. Okay, the last several chapters, okay, uh, going back to probably 30 something, and that uh, Alma's been talking to his different sons, okay, he, uh, he's had a couple chapters with, uh, with Helaman, he had a chapter with uh, Shiblon, he had about three chapters with. Uh, or chapter of the Corianton. So he's been giving them different advice. Uh, that's kind of an interlude from their mission to the Zoramites as they went there to preach the, the word. So now all that is finished. Okay, 42 was the end of, of that. So now as it's saying here, it says, uh, you know, once now that they recorded that, it says now the sons of Alma went forth and, and began to declare the word up to the people again. Okay, having had their pep talk or whatever from their, their dads, and now they were ready to, ready to go again. And uh, in particular, I would point out that even the third son, who had done some things wrong, okay, that uh, you know the, his father corrected him, and now he sent him back out again, right? So it wasn't he was looking to to ground him forever, right? But rather just to straighten him out and say, okay, now let's now let's do it right. So now, so so all the sons are out doing it. This is a that you know even Alma was maybe getting a little bit older by this time. He says he, he couldn't rest. He, he's going to be out there too and doing the doing the work, right? And so uh, so they're. Going to go ahead and preach the, the word again among the Zoramites. And so, but for this part of the record, it's, I'm not going to bother to elaborate on that, just to say that's what they're doing here, right? They, they went out and they preached the word and consistent with the way they've been doing it all, all along, right? After the, the spirit of prophecy, revelation, and after the holy word of God, right? So, this is what, what they, they were doing. So, so, that part of the story is over for now. We're going to be transitioning to a new, a new storyline at this point. And now I return to an account of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges. For behold, it came to pass that the, the Zoramites became Lamanites. Therefore, in the commencement of the eighteenth year, the people of the Nephites saw that the Lamanites were coming upon them. Therefore, they made preparations for war, yea, they gathered together their armies in the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came with their thousands, and they came into the land of Antionum, which is the land of the Zoramites, and a man by the name of Zarahemna was their leader. Now I said it was a new storyline, really. It's returning to maybe an old storyline. All right, we're going to detail some of the, some more battle uh, stories here, okay, between the, the good guys and the bad guys. All right, so this is, we're going to talk about the, the war between the Nephites and the Lamanites. All right, now in verse 4 it says, the Zoramites became Lamanites, because who were the Zoramites? Who were they descendants of? They would be Nephites, okay? The Zoramites, they crossed over, right? They, they weren't really Nephites, but they joined forces with the Lamanites, so therefore it, they became part of their group. And, and the reason that it says it this way is because I, I think it's just to make it easier to write the narrative at this point, right? Rather than have to say, you know, okay, the, the Lamanites and the Zoramites fought against the Nephites, whether they, they just to call them by one name. So everybody who's on that side is called the Lamanites, everybody who's on this side is called the Nephites, even though it, there may have been different groups of people within those two bigger groups. Okay, so now it says that they prepared for war, they gathered together their armies in the land of, of Jershon. Okay, now, the land of Jershon is, is one that is it's written up here on our, on our little map. Who, who lives in the land of Jershon? It was the converted Lamanites lived there, right? The, 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 the people called the people of Anti Nephi Lehi, also known as the people of Ammon, okay, the other names that they, they went by. But yeah, it was the, the Lamanites who were converted, the, the ones who. Um, had been uh, very murderous people, so when they when they converted to Christ, they, they buried their weapons in the ground and said, we're not going to pick up our, our weapons anymore, right? So that, those are the people who lived in the land of Jershon. And he says they couldn't, so they couldn't fight anymore since they buried their weapons and said they wouldn't fight anymore, so therefore the Nephites gave them their own little, little land there and then said, we'll, we'll protect you, right? So we'll have our army protect the, that land and, you know, you... You, know, you, you give us some, some money to help fund the army, but, but we'll, we'll protect your land as so you don't have to fight. Okay, so that's the land of, of Jershon, right? So, so that's why it says they, they gathered together their armies in the land of Jershon because they needed the armies there because if the people who lived there weren't going to be in the army, so they had to be ready to protect that part of, of the land, right? So, and, and now in five, it's, it's the beginning of coming in, or I mentioned some of the, the names there, right? The, the, the Zer Zerahemna is going to be the, the leader of the army this time, right? And so they're they're gathering the land of Antionum where the Zoramites lived, which I guess is where Alma and his sons had been all along. I don't 
they had mentioned the, the land by name prior to this, but this was the, where they had been in the land of the Zoramites all along. So, preparation for war, get, get, get the battle lines are drawn, and everybody's ready to, ready to go. And now, as the Amalekites were of a more wicked and murderous disposition than the Lamanites were in and of themselves, therefore Zarahemna appointed chief captains over the Lamanites, and they were all Amalekites and Zoramites. Now this he did, that he might preserve their hatred towards the Nephites, that he might bring them into subjection to the accomplishment of his, his designs. For behold, his designs were to stir up the Lamanites to anger against the Nephites. This he did, that he might usurp great power over them, and also that he might gain power over the Nephites by bringing them into bondage. In 6, so we have another name mentioned here, the uh, Amalekites. It was another subset of, uh, of the Nephites, all right, and the you know, ones who came to not be on the side of the Nephites. Right, so they, they they joined in here as well. So then they see why they want to call them all the Lamanites, right? Because otherwise you get all kinds of names that you got to throw in here. So, so again, for the sake of the ease of writing, that's just going to refer to all the people of the Lamanites. But in, in six, you can see it says that the these sort of smaller groups, which were Nephites by birth, right, were actually more uh, up in arms than even the Lamanites were, right? That they that they wanted to they would you know. The, the rebellion, right? You know, they, they wanted to win, so so it says that's why it says he he picked all, all the chief captains from those groups, right? They're they're really murderous here. They're, they're really into this. They really want to win, so we'll, we'll make them be, be be the captains. This way, they can stir up everybody up to to fight a good war. Okay, so this was good, good strategy here, right? So that's why he said he wanted to preserve their hatred towards the the, the Nephites, and uh, so he felt he could lead this kind of group because they were already motivated. Okay, so and you see his his own uh, Zarahemna, the leader here, what he was going to try to accomplish, right? That uh, he figured he can get this group to be under his control, and then also then try to defeat the Nephites and bring them into bondage. So that was the that was the plan. And now the design of the Nephites was to support their lands and their houses and their wives and their children, that they might preserve them from the hands of their enemies, and also that they might preserve their rights and their privileges, yea, and also their liberty that they might worship God according to their desires. For they knew that if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, that whosoever should worship God in spirit and in truth, the true and the living God, the Lamanites would destroy. Yea, and they also knew the extreme hatred of the Lamanites towards their brethren, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, who were called the people of Ammon, and they would not take up arms. Yea, they had entered into a covenant, and they would not break it. Therefore, if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, they would be destroyed." It's giving you the perspective of the two sides here, right? See, at first it said this is what the Lamanites hope to accomplish: kill, murder, have power, put people in bondage. Right? That was their motivation. Okay. Now the Nephites it says the designs of the Nephites was to just to protect what they had. Okay. They weren't looking to to take anything away from anybody or hurt anybody. They just wanted to defend themselves. And as it says right there, it says to preserve. With their houses, wives, children, uh, privileges, liberty, rights, and so forth. Okay, so this, these were the things that they wanted to to do, recognizing that it, if they fall into the hands of the enemy, they, they lose that. Okay, they, they lose that intent. It's that anybody who should worship worship the, the true and living God in spirit and truth, the Lamanites would destroy. Okay, so therefore it was important for them to win this war in order to preserve their religious liberty and their families and so forth. So that's, that's, their, that's their goal, is just to, to defend themselves and defend what they have. But in the 11, it's also mentioning that, uh, you know, that they, they knew that the Lamanites has had an extreme hatred for, for the people of anti-Nephi-Lehi, we just mentioned a few minutes ago. All the people of Lamanites, and, and why would they have an extreme hatred for them? They used to be with them, okay, and then, so they, they were converted and left them, and they went over and lived with the Nephi, so they're, they're traitors, so they're, they're the worst ones of all, okay, to them. So, so yeah, they really don't have any, you know, any love for them, so it's when so it says here the ones who, who wouldn't take up arms and they enter into a covenant and so forth. So they, they knew that if the Lamanites got them, there'd be no be no battle, right? Because then they're not going to fight. They, they would rather be killed than pick up enemy or pick up uh, weapons. And the Nephites would not suffer that they should be destroyed. Therefore, they gave them lands for their inheritance. And the people of Ammon did give unto the Nephites a large portion of their substance to support their armies. And thus the Nephites were compelled alone to withstand against the Lamanites, who were a compound of Laman and Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael, and all those who had descended from the Nephites, who were Amalekites and Zoramites, and the descendants of the priests of Noah. Now those descendants 
were as numerous nearly as were the Nephites, and thus the Nephites were obliged to contend with their brethren even unto bloodshed. 12, it's, uh, 12 and it's talking about them protecting people of anti-Nephi Lehi, right? It says they didn't want them to be destroyed. That's why they gave them their own, their own land, right? And then 13 is what I said a few minutes ago, that the, that they, uh, the people of Ammon uh, gave them money to help fund the army since they, they weren't going to fight. But yet, so the Nephites had, had some, some resources, but they didn't have much manpower from them because they, they weren't going to fight. So they had a, since the Nephites alone had to go up against the Lamanites now. The second half of 13, it spells out really who comprises the group of, of Lamanites we're talking about, which again, we've already made some mention of that, but it's actually spelled out here since they were a, a compound, right, or, or I might call it a combination, okay, of Laman and Lemuel, who were the original sons of Lehi, of Lehi okay, and the, and the sons of Ishmael, which if you remember way, way back, remember they, they went and got Ishmael, and the, the wives married all the sons of Lehi, but then he got some sons also, and that they were on the Laman Lemuel side, right? So, so it had them. It says, and all those who were descended from the Nephites, who were the Amalekites and Zoramites, who we mentioned <coughs> tonight, and, and also the descendants of the priests of, of King Noah, the, 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 the wicked king, the, the one that, uh, that Alma was one of the priests, and he, he left them, that's Alma Sr. And so, uh, and they were. Let's we'll see, the priests of Noah were they uh, in, in Nephites or Lamanites? They were among the, the Nephites, all right? They were, in fact, this was the map of when the, 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 the Zenith was a, a Nephite, left Zara Hedlow went over here, and then his son was King Noah, okay? His son was, was, was Limhi, and then Alma came and, and, and brought them all, all back, all right? So this was the King Noah we're talking about, so this was all Nephite people that we're, that we're talking about right here, okay? So, so King Noah and the wicked priests, they were Nephites also. So, so it's, it's giving you a, just a little, a little diagram of who makes up this group. All right, so you got all, all these groups, and uh, again, it's just the Nephites is why it says that the, they were so numerous. I mean, I guess there were lots of Nephites too, because it sounds like it was pretty much almost an even uh, battle here in terms of number of people. But, uh, but yet, the, it's just the Nephites against all these other groups, and some of them were really motivated to, to, uh, to fight here. And it came to pass, as the armies of the Lamanites had gathered together in the land of Antionum, behold, the armies of the Nephites were prepared to meet them in the land of Jershon. Now the leader of the Nephites, or the man who had been appointed to be the chief captain over the Nephites, now the chief captain took the command of all the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Moroni. And Moroni took all the command and the government of their wars. And he was only twenty and five years old when he was appointed chief captain over the armies of the Nephites. And it came to pass that he met the Lamanites in the borders of Jershon, and his people were armed with swords and with scimitars and all manner of weapons of war. Okay, I think we need, a, we need a, another city here. It's already been mentioned twice. Which uh, city do I need to put up here? Antionum. Antionum, okay. Let's see, where, where, where will we put Antionum? Let's put it down here, okay. Now, now, why did I write on this side of the paper versus that side of the paper? After the people of, of Limhi left this area and came back here, who, who were they fleeing from? Lamanites, okay? So the, the, the Lamanites live in the land of, of, of Nephi, the Nephites live in the land of Zarahemla. Okay? So, so and Antionum, who, who lived there? The Ormites, right? At least the Ormites were Nephites, okay? And in fact, that's, that's where Alma and his sons have been hanging out for the last several chapters, right, in the land of Antionum, right, but this is chapter 31 <coughs> that we've been here, okay, so that, that's definitely on this side of the, of, of the paper, right, so Antionum is here, so now you see the, the, the valley lines are bouncing between Antionum and Jershon, which are both on, on this side of the, of the land, right, so that's kind of where they're gathering, so being, being these guys have defected to the Lamanites, so the Lamanites are, are here, and the the Lamanites who defected actually live up there, right? the Nephites are protecting them, so that, that's kind of where their camps are right now. Okay. All right, and now we have a new name being uh, introduced here. Okay, and uh, this is uh, someone who's been uh, appointed to lead the whole effort from the Nephite side, right? And, and, and his name is Moroni, okay? So we're going to write his name maybe down here. So not confusing. Right, and, and he's and he's how old? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay, he was a young, a young guy, 
right? But yet to, he was given this responsibility to lead to lead the army. Right? Since here in twenty uh, or seventeen, he says he took the command, all the command and the government of, of their wars, and he was twenty five year old when he was appointed chief captain over the armies that he fights. Right? So this was somebody with some some skill here and some uh, ability to lead the army. So they turned the whole thing over to him. And you know, you think about the responsibility for something like that, okay, because we, it's already been described what the stakes are, right, it's not like, uh, you know, you're just going out to win, to win a football game, right, if you lose, oh well, right, I mean here, if, if they lose, they, they lose their religious liberty, you know, they're going to be in bondage, so I mean, this was a big, a big deal, so really a lot of responsibility to put on a, a young man, so that, that yet uh, Moroni was going to be up to the, up to the task. Now the next uh, question was, uh, was how, how was uh, how was Moroni re related, if you will, to the, the the book of Moroni? Is he the writer of that one? There's really no relation. Okay, I mean, other than it's the same name. Okay, I mean, you know, however people are related, they're related. But it, yeah, it's, his name was Moroni, and then later on, the uh, the man named Mormon named his son Moroni, and so his son Moroni is the one with the book of Moroni. Right, so it's really no. No connection here, I mean, just the fact they have the same name. And when the armies of the Lamanites saw that the people of Nephi, or that Moroni, had prepared his people with breastplates and with arm shields, yea, and also shields to defend their heads, and also they were dressed with thick clothing, now the army of Zarahemna was not prepared with any such thing. They had only their swords and their scimitars, their bows and their arrows, their stones and their slings, and they were naked, save if it were a skin which was girded about their loins, yea, all were naked save it were the Zoramites and the Amalekites. But they were not armed with breastplates nor shields, therefore they were exceedingly afraid of the armies of the Nephites because of their armor, notwithstanding their number being so much greater than the Nephites. It's already described now how the, uh, the armies were prepared. And uh, so now it says in the 19th, so when the armies of I saw the people of Nephi had prepared themselves with breastplates, armed shields, and, and shields, and so forth, they were a little... Uh, a little nervous, all right? They said, these, these guys came prepared to fight here, all right? We're running around in loincloths, and then they've got uh, shields and breastplates and helmets and so forth, okay? We're feeling a little, uh, a little outclassed here, right? So they were a little worried. Uh, now, in, in, in verse 19, it says, when, when the armies of the Lamanites saw that the people of, of Nephi, and then, then like the, the wording changes, it says, or that actually Moroni had prepared his people, right? It, it sounds to me like, like it's, he's actually correcting what he's saying, all right? He started out to say that the people of, of Nephi had prepared this, or, or that Moroni had prepared his people. So, so, so why didn't the writer go back and, and, and erase the, 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 the part? It's almost like it was a mistake. Why, 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 did, they, why did he leave it in there? Because it was already engraved, right? See, this is where you can appreciate how they're, they're writing it, okay? They're engraving it on the plate. So if he had already engraved the people of Nephi, it's like, oops. So that kind of came to mind as I was looking at this, that, uh, you know, you see that almost like he's changing his mind how he's going to say it, right? But yeah, you can't easily go back and correct it, so you just have to say, or, or really I meant this, right? And then you, then you just read it through and you get the right, the right meaning. Okay, so, so anyway, so it says the, the armies were prepared, and like, it's now the people of Zarahemna, they said, whoa, they, they got nothing like that, right? They're, they're running around in loincloths, and they don't have the breastplates and the shields. Right, so they were a little nervous coming into this, and said, even though we got more people, they, they look more prepared than we do, so we're going to have a little tough, uh, a tough fight here. Behold, now it came to pass that they durst not come against the Nephites in the borders of Jershon. Therefore they departed out of the land of Antionum into the wilderness, and took their journey round about in the wilderness, away by the head of the river Sidon, that they might come into the land of Manti and take possession of the land, for they did not suppose that the armies of Moroni would know whither they had gone. But it came to pass, as soon as they had departed into the wilderness, Moroni sent spies into the wilderness to watch their camp. And Moroni, also knowing of the prophecies of Alma, sent certain men unto him, desiring him that he should inquire of the Lord whither the armies of the Nephites should go to defend themselves against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the word of the Lord came unto Alma, and Alma informed the messengers of Moroni that the armies of the Lamanites were marching round about in the wilderness, that they might come over into the land of Manti, that they might commence an attack upon the weaker part of the people. And those messengers went and delivered the message unto Moroni. As we read some of this, you're going to see some of the, the strategy that was employed, all right? And again, we'll try to just kind of boil it down to the, to the basics here. Obviously, you don't need to know every city or river they were hiding in, okay? But, uh, 
the, in, in, so, but so you know, in 22 it says that the, the Lamanites, when they saw that they were kind of outclassed with this uh, with the weapons and preparation, said, well, we're, we're not going to go fight in the land of Jershon, because that, that's where they're all based, all right? That's their home, their home base, so we're, we definitely don't want to do it that way, all right? So it says that they, they kind of detoured, all right? And they, they made their way out of Antionum, and they went along the other side, and, then and so they were going to take a different way around. They were going to be sneaky, okay? Right, but, but, but now in, uh, in, in 23, right, it says, well, first of all, Moroni had spies out there, so he saw what they were doing, but, but he, he decided to do something even better than that. Right? So you, now you can see that this is the part why it makes sense that it would be included in a spiritual book, right? That it's not just a, a war story, but now you see a spiritual component to this. Is that they went and asked Alma, went, asked Alma you know, why don't you pray and ask God where these, these people are going to be? So this way we can be in the right place to defend ourselves, because again, we're just looking to defend our religious liberty here, so it's not like we're looking to get rich off this war. So, uh, so that's what happened. So he says, uh, Alma went and, and prayed, and it says the word of the Lord came to Alma, and he told them where they were going to be, right? So, and, and, so then they were able to go and, and uh, prepare accordingly. Now, what does it take to do that kind of a, of a thing, would you say, to, to, to use that kind of a strategy? It would take faith. Right, because you know, because again, this is not, um, you know, asking, uh, you know, what color should I paint my house, all right, or uh, you know, or what even what what city should I live in, all right? This this is a life or death thing. So now you're you're at, praying for something that if if you're right, you're gonna, you're probably going to win. If you're wrong, you're probably going to lose. Okay, so they're putting it all on this this prayer of faith and a, an answer from God to through Alma. So they they trusted that this was as firm as anything else that you could come up with, right? It's, it's firmer than, the, let's, let's get all the, the smart uh, war strategy people together and uh, you know, get their advice. We're going to go go to God and ask him, and he's going to tell us, and, and we're going to do what he says. Now Moroni, leaving a part of his army in the land of Jershon, lest by any means a part of the Lamanites should come into that land and take possession of the city, took the remaining part of his army and marched over into the land of Manti. And he caused that all the people in that quarter of the land should gather themselves together to battle against the Lamanites, to defend their lands and their country, their rights and their liberties. Therefore they were prepared against the time of the coming of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his army should be secreted in the valley which was near the bank of the river Sidon, which was on the west of the river Sidon in the wilderness. This is the beginning of following the direction of God that, that was given. Right, so, so they they got their army together and they're ready to leave the, the land of the land of Jershon, right, where uh, they were based, and, this, and it's now it just kind of charts where they went, okay, along the river side and then through the land of Manti, right, following the direction that God had given them, right. So, so God gave them a very detailed uh, plan, right, go this way, follow this, and go along this way, and then you'll be in the right in the right place. Okay, and it, now it says at the beginning of uh, twenty five, it says. Moroni left a part of the army in, in the land of, of Jershon in case any of the Lamanites came there. Now, why, why would he feel the need to leave a, a part of the army there? These people had to be defended at all times, right? Because they, they would not fight due to their covenant that they made, made with God. And again, because this is a spiritual uh, side of, of the army or side of the war, they are willing to go by things that are said to God and that God says to them. You know, because I mean, I mean, you can bet if these people were on the other side, they'd be saying, "Who cares about your your dumb promise? All right, get get those weapons and get going. You know, you're you're one of us. You're you're going to fight. All right." But the people of Nephi, they said, "Well, that's important. You know, it would be terrible for you to break your your covenant with God and you, you help us win the war. You lose your soul. All right? So that's not a good deal. So they're they're supportive of them keeping this uh, this commitment. And so now the part of the army stays back to to protect them." And Moroni placed spies round about, that he might know when the camp of the Lamanites should come. And now, as Moroni knew the intention of the Lamanites, that it was their intention to destroy their brethren, or to subject them and bring them into bondage, that they might establish a kingdom unto themselves over all the land, and he also knowing that it was the only desire of the Nephites to preserve their lands, and their liberty, and their church, therefore he thought it no sin that he should defend them by stratagem, Therefore, he found by his spies which course the Lamanites were to take. He's uh, describing how he employed his spies around to to watch what they were doing and then and, and to kind of know where they were going so they could act accordingly. And of course, they were still armed with, with what God had told them, right? But uh, now in twenty nine and thirty, 
is uh, just saying that Moroni understood the, um, the desires, the goals of both sides, right? He says that uh, he knew the intention of the Lamanites, it was their intent to destroy their brethren, bring them into bondage, and so forth. In other words, they're the bad guys, right? They, they want to do bad things. Our, our side wants to do good things. They just want to preserve their land, their liberty, their, their families, and so forth. So, therefore, I don't have to feel bad about doing whatever it takes to win. Right? That's what it says in 30. He said, uh, he thought in no sin that he should, should defend them by strategy. Right? We'll, we'll do whatever it takes. Now, I mean, really, in, in any war, I mean, if you're going to fight the war, I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing to use strategy no matter what your goal is. But uh, I guess he felt, felt like, well, whatever, whatever it is, I, I don't feel like I'm cheating. And the, the fact that God is telling me to do that, that's okay, too. Right? Because we, we need to win this because we're fighting for a good cause. They're fighting for a bad cause. So, so we should win. They should lose. So we want to make sure that we win this and we'll use whatever means is necessary to make, it, make that happen. Therefore he divided his army and brought a part over into the valley and concealed them on the east and on the south of the hill Ripla. And the remainder he concealed in the west valley on the west of the river Sidon and so down into the borders of the land Manti. And thus having placed his army according to his desire, he was prepared to meet them. How much of the war has been fought so far? Nothing yet, right? It's, they're still getting ready. Okay, so they're they're getting in position. So, so you, you couldn't really see this is like it's a strategy, right? You can see it's like they're sitting and setting up the the chessboard or something, right? It's like we're gonna we're gonna put a few people over there. We're gonna put the little army over there. And we're gonna surround this this uh, city and cover both sides here. So it's just everything's getting in in position. They they weren't they weren't jumping out there and saying, you know fight fight run run. They're, 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 rather they're taking their time and uh, employing strategy and letting God direct them and being in a position to, to do a good job with this uh, particular uh, battle. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came up on the north of the hill where a part of the army of Moroni was concealed. And as the Lamanites had passed the hill Ripla and came into the valley and began to cross the river Sidon, the army which was concealed on the south of the hill, which was led by a man whose name was Lehi, and he led his army forth and encircled the Lamanites about on the east in their rear. And it came to pass that the Lamanites when they saw the Nephites coming upon them in their rear, turned them about and began to contend with the army of Lehi. Now they were in position and they were kind of divided into the different areas, so that they waited, right? Because they, they, they knew that the Lamanites were going to be coming right right past them. I mean, the, the spies and or what, what God had revealed, right? That they knew where they were going, so they, they were in position. You know how much easier it is to, to win a war if you know what the other side's going to do. Right, because there's no element of surprise there. So they, they knew what they were going to do. So they were they were waiting, and they were just waiting for them to pass. And so as soon as they passed, now they, they were caught because they were in between the, the the two sides of the army. Right, the one side had, had was Mor led by Moroni, and the other side was led by a man named named Lehi. So he was in in the back uh, when after the Lamanites passed. And so now it says the Lamanites they they saw oh there's the army of Moroni in front of us. They turn around. Here's the army of Lehi behind us. Right. So now they're now they're pinned in between the the two sides. And the work of death commenced on both sides, but it was more dreadful on the part of the Lamanites, for their nakedness was exposed to the heavy blows of the Nephites with their swords and their scimitars, which brought death almost at every stroke. While on the other hand, there was now and then a man fell among the Nephites by their swords and the loss of blood, they being shielded from the more vital parts of the body, or the more vital parts of the body being shielded from the strokes of the Lamanites, by their breastplates and their arm shields and their head plates, and thus the Nephites did carry on the work of death among the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the Lamanites became frightened because of the great destruction among them, even until they began to flee towards the river Sidon. And they were pursued by Lehi and his men, and they were driven by Lehi into the waters of Sidon, and they crossed the waters of Sidon. And Lehi retained his armies upon the bank of the river Sidon that they should not cross. Okay, so in this section you see the first actual battle occurring, right? And now here's what, what they were afraid of, uh, what the Lamanites were afraid of, right? So they, they're better prepared than we are. So it says, well, you know, that, I mean, they're killing maybe an occasional Nephite who just you know, maybe loses a lot of blood, but for the most part, their, their shields and their, their helmet and so forth help them withstand lots of blows, whereas the Lamanites were all exposed, one, one shot, and, and they're done, okay? So it's, it was a lot easier to kill off the, uh, the Lamanite people, so they were, not, they were not prepared, right? They were not prepared for this kind of a battle. I guess they just thought they were going to come in and say, boom, and the Nephites were going to roll over, right? But they, they were not prepared for this kind of battle, so it's, it's, they, they lost a lot, of, a lot of men. 
So uh, by, by 39, they're finding out that this is not going too well. Right, so the Lamanites became frightened and they, they began to, to flee, and so now, now, now the chase is on, right? We said we're not going to win this head to head, so now we, we have to escape and figure out something else. And it came to pass that Moroni and his army met the Lamanites in the valley on the other side of the river Sidon and began to fall upon them and to slay them. And the Lamanites did flee again before them towards the land of Manti, and they were met again by the armies of Moroni. Now in this case, the Lamanites did fight exceedingly. Yea, never had the Lamanites been known to fight with such exceeding great strength and courage, no, not even from the beginning. And they were inspired by the Zoramites and the Amalekites, who were their chief captains and leaders, and by Zarahemna, who was their chief captain, or their chief leader and commander. Yea, they did fight like dragons, and many of the Nephites were slain by their hands. Yea, for they did smite in two many of their headplates, and they did pierce many of their breastplates, and they did smite off many of their arms, and thus the Lamanites did smite in their fierce anger. Now, now it mentions that they were, the Lamanites began to fight uh, fiercely, right? So it was great, exceeding great strength and courage, and the, and the, they began to fight exceedingly and so forth. Why did they suddenly get, rise to the occasion here? They were it was backs against the wall, right? And that's what it was, is they were being chased and they had, they had nowhere else to go. So, you know, if you've ever experienced anything like that, you know, you, somebody tries to uh, flee or whatever, and then they reach the corner and there's no place else to go. Well, now they, they come out fighting like crazy. They know, they know this is it, right? You're, I, I can't run anymore. So it's, that's, that's how they were reacting here, right? They were, they were backs against the wall, so now they, just, they came out fighting fiercely. As you can see, it says some, some of their blows uh, split the head plates, all right? So they were you know, getting through even the, uh, the, the protection that the Nephites had, and so now the Nephites were losing a few more people as they were you know, trying desperately to survive here. So then you push somebody into a corner, and then you, you know, what happens if you ever see like, a, like an animal or something, right? You like, you know, like a cat in the corner and turns around, and the least are scratching away, right? So you know, they can become like fierce when they're, they're trapped in a corner like that. Nevertheless, the Nephites were inspired by a better cause, for they were not fighting for monarchy nor power, but they were fighting for their homes and their liberties, their wives and their children, and their all, yea, for their rights of worship and their church. And they were doing that which they felt was the duty which they owed to their God. For the Lord had said unto them, and also unto their fathers, that inasmuch as ye are not guilty of the first offense, neither the second, ye shall not suffer yourselves to be slain by the hands of your enemies. And again the Lord has said, that ye shall defend your families even unto bloodshed. Therefore for this cause were the Nephites contending with the Lamanites to defend themselves and their families and their lands, their country, and their rights, and their religion. 40, 45 to 47, as we just read, I mean, it's reiterating that the, the Nephites still had a better cause that they were fighting for, and so that's, I believe, why God was with them, right? Because they were following, really, the, the commandments of God, as it says in the 46 and 47, right? In 47 in particular, it says, you'll defend your families even unto bloodshed, right? So it says that the, the Lord, in this case, had instructed them, and you need to defend yourself, because the alternative was that they were going to have to give up their religious uh, liberty, Right? So they were fighting to be able to continue to serve God in the right way, so therefore they, they had to defend themselves, they had to win this particular battle. So that's why they're, that God instructed them to, uh, to do this. And, and so that back to, going back to when Alma had prayed for the, God's direction, it was with the idea that this army was going to be the army that would win this particular uh, battle. And it came to pass that when the men of Moroni saw the fierceness and the anger of the Lamanites, they were about to shrink and flee from them. And Moroni, perceiving their intent, sent forth and inspired their hearts with these thoughts, gave the thoughts of their lands, their liberty, gave their freedom from bondage. And it came to pass that they turned upon the Lamanites, and they cried with one voice unto the Lord their God, for their liberty and their freedom from bondage. And they began to stand against the Lamanites with power, and then in that selfsame hour that they cried unto the Lord for their freedom, the Lamanites began to flee before them, and they fled even to the waters of Sidon. Right, so as they were facing this uh, sudden fierce counterattack, right, so, you know, some of the men were a little frightened, especially they see the, the blows breaking head plates and so forth. They said, oh, these guys have, uh, they, they got serious now, right? So some of the men were gonna, were gonna flee, but now this is where having a good leader uh, benefits you, right? So the, their choice of a leader was, was a good choice because as it says, they're in 48, uh, it says that uh, when Moroni saw that what was gonna happen, 
since he inspired their hearts with the thoughts of, you know, come on, we have to do this, right? You know, for the sake of our land, liberty, freedom, and so forth, all right? We have to do this. This is not the, the runaway time, right? This is the time to, to rise to the occasion, and to, God is on our side, and we need to, to make this happen, all right? So he was a good uh, leader and, and uh, an inspirational leader for them, right? So it's good to have an inspirational leader who can get you to do what, what has to be done. Right, and so, so upon do, doing that, it, it, it's in, in 50, they, they turn and, and continue the battle, and see, notice it says, in, in the same hour that they cried to the Lord for their freedom, it's when the Lamanites began to flee, right? So basically, it was like the equivalent of an answer prayer, right? Because they, they cried unto God, help us to win for, for your sake, and then when they did that, then the, the other side ran away, right? So the, the power of God was, was with them in this particular battle. Now the Lamanites were more numerous, yea, by more than double the number of the Nephites. Nevertheless, they were driven insomuch that they were gathered together in one body in the valley upon the bank by the river Sidon. Therefore the armies of Moroni encircled them about, yea, even on both sides of the river, for behold, on the east were the men of Lehi. Therefore, when Zarahemna saw the men of Lehi on the east of the river Sidon, and the armies of Moroni on the west of the river Sidon, that they were encircled about by the Nephites, they were struck with terror. Now Moroni, when he saw their terror, commanded his men that they should stop shedding their blood. I'm surrounded now, right? With the, there's no, no place to go but in the water, apparently, right? Because they got half the army on the one side, half the army on the other, and they're, they're surrounded at this point, right? So now they, it says they were struck with terror and so forth, understanding we're, we're going to get slaughtered here, right? So now this chapter ends by Moroni says, we're, we're not here to, to butcher these people, right? We just want to wanted to defend ourselves, so we're going to stop killing them. You can see that you know, Moroni was not a, you know, was not that kind of a leader. He was just there to win, win the war, not to, to kill people. He did not take any pleasure in killing the people, but rather just that they could defend their religious uh, liberty and their families and so forth.